I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty excited for this one. It's definitely going to be a different style of video today because we're going to try our first tier list. Hey everybody, it's Luca from Rackets and Runners. Now, I've been wanting to make a tier list style video for a while now, and I'm super stoked that we're starting with 95 to 98 square inch rackets. Generally speaking, other than a specific 100 square inch frame that I probably don't need to name, these are my favorite style of rackets, so I really wanted to start the tier list here. So I'm going to set a couple things straight here in a second, but before any of that, I want to remind you that any of the rackets we talk about here today, you can check out on our website, racketsandrunners.ca. And please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know down in the comments section what you want me to cover next. I see you guys skipping that part. I'm going to come up with something better next time. So, first of all, I'm only going to talk about the 95 to 98 square inch rackets that we carry. I've said this before with rankings, but I'm not going to talk about any of the rackets we don't have. I also need to emphasize that this is my personal opinion. There are some rackets that I might put lower than others, and you might disagree with that, and even some of my coworkers might disagree with me. Overall, I like to be as objective as possible, but personal bias is always going to play a little part in these rankings. I'm not going to waste much more time here because there are a lot of rackets to cover, and knowing me, this could become a very long video, but I do want to talk about a couple more things that's going to help determine where each racket lies on the list. Overall quality of the racket, performance in its most impressive characteristic compared to the rest of the industry, and an X-Factor vibe surrounding the racket, these are all factors that are going to determine where it stands. The last one's a little difficult to understand, it kind of leaves room for a veto, but it's a combination of a lot of things, especially including how general consumers feel about the racket. Anyways, that's it. I'm super excited to do this. We're gonna move away from the screen back to the computer. Let's get into it. All right, everybody, welcome back to the studio where all the magic happens. That's the screen that I used to record behind me. Um, also, I just found a gray hair on my head for the first time ever, so, yeah, um, at least this day can't get any worse. The good news is we're talking about my favorite style of rackets, 95 to 98s, so that's exciting. Oh, I also wanted to just briefly touch on this little D-tier here. At first, I wanted to get rid of the D-tier, first of all, because, honestly, I think the industry is in a really good place right now where I'm not sure there are that many rackets that would be worthy of a D-tier, and also, I don't, D is not a good grade. So I don't really want to give any of the rackets we carry a D, but I'll leave it there just in case one of these goes in there. So let's get started. It looks like we're starting with the Pro Staff 97, which is a very interesting one to start on because honestly, I have no idea where I'm going to put this racket because when I demoed it, I wasn't, I liked it. It's a pro staff. I, I like every pro staff. Every time a pro staff comes out, I like it. But I preferred the previous one back then. And there's a couple reasons for that. The main one being they softened it up a little bit. Um, the whole paradigm bending thing made the throat super flexible, which definitely made the racket feel more flexy than the previous one. And I just didn't have that same sharp crispness as I did with the previous one. That being said, it's still a very, very clean feeling frame. And I actually think that extra little bit of pocketing is probably generally a good thing, especially considering where the industry is going with the whole stiffer hoops, softer throats. So I'm going to slot this in the A tier for now. Not an S tier racket for me. There are a few improvements that could be made, mainly in terms of feel. Um, but yeah, if you want a classic pro staff, it's still very much feels that way. Not too much extra going on in terms of power and spin. V-Core 95, okay. This is a really, really, really good racket. Oof, I wanna put it in S tier. First of all, I've, I know I've said it a few times now, but I am very happy that Yonex drastically changed the V-Core design because I think the old one was getting a little dated. So two things that happened with the new design is they moved the sweet spot up the frame because it's squared off the top, which did a couple things. It made it more powerful and it opened it up for more spin in the sweet spot. And the silicone oil infused grommets on this thing are actually really, really impressive. Silicone oil infused grommets are one of my favorite technologies right now because they work really well to amplify spin without making the racket any more wild. So the V-Core 95, the one problem, obviously, is that it's a 95 square inch racket, but it's so forgiving because of that design. I, I kind of do want to put this thing in S tier because 95 square inch rackets are just super precise. The fact that it is more forgiving than your average 95 means that's not as big of a problem. And 
this amount of spin and power on a 95 is, I've never felt it before, period. So I think I'm gonna put the V-Core 95 in the S tier. I might be doing this wrong, but I'm gonna, again, leave room to change that potentially. Uh, ooh, T-Fight 305. Okay, well, we're starting off with a lot of good rackets here. T-Fight 305 is a fantastic stick. I played a lot with the previous one. This one I haven't played quite as much with. We actually just did a Technofiber Rackets video. That was our last video. So I'm definitely kind of used to this racket right now. What really sets it apart is just how spin friendly it is considering it's an 18 mainer. And when you have an 18 mainer that, th that is this spin friendly, you get a certain level of consistency with spin that you don't really get with other rackets. And of course, Technofiber rackets are foam filled, so they feel amazing. The one little problem I have with the T-Fight is that it's there's so much weight balanced in the hoop that it if you want to play it stock, it takes a really long time to get used to. I don't really understand why they did that. So I think I'm going to put it in the A tier for now. Yeah, A tier. All right, Blade 98, 16 by 19. So if you watched our How to Choose a Racket mini series thing, you know that this was second place behind the racket I switched to. The thing is, okay, here's the thing with the blade. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the blade, just the line in general. I have every blade. I think you guys know that at this point, I said it enough times. The reason why I'm kind of hesitating between A or B here, I can't put it S tier. And the reason I can't put it S tier is because I just don't think the feel is good enough for the fact that it's a proper control racket. I understand why the feel is different. It makes it more forgiving at a lower swing weight, which is really, really impressive technologically. But when I'm playing with a blade, I want to feel just that really nice sensation when I make contact. I don't get that with this version of the blade. There would be a lot of blades that would go in the S tier, a lot of blades. But this one, I'm gonna put it in the B tier for now. But it is a really solid racket because, yeah, I've said it a few times, but the blade has that element of spin and user friendliness that a lot of control rackets don't have. But I think B tier is where it's going. Ooh, Percept 97. Okay, the last V-Core Pro was just not good. It was so mushy, vibration dampening mesh, the fact that they thickened it up and changed the shape. So I was really excited for the Percept because I, I wanted to like Yonix's control racket because I usually do. So the shape didn't change, which at first I was bummed about, but I don't think the shape was the problem in the last one. I think it was vibration dampening mesh and they took that out, added servo filter, and this thing feels so much better, at least A tier for sure question is, do I put it S tier? I'm a huge, huge fan of this racket. The more I take it out, the more I think, nah, I'm probably not gonna switch to it because I just switched to a racket and that would be way too quick. But the feel is, is really good. Not traditional, but not many rackets do feel traditional anymore but way more well-defined sweet spot. Definitely a smaller sweet spot than the last one, but that mushiness is gone and I hate mushy, especially in small head size rackets. The spin has also gotten better. I, I made a mistake in the best rackets of the year. I said there was silicone oil infused grommets in here because the spin was so good. There are no silicone oil infused grommets. Actually, maybe Onyx consider putting them in because I see no downsides to silicone oil infused grommets. How many times can I say silicone oil and silicone oil infused grommets in this video. We shall see. But anyways, uh, yeah, really solid spin. The one problem I have with the Percept 97 310 is that I do think it needs weight in the hoop. So I'm gonna put it in the A tier for now. Okay, so TF4305, I really like this racket. It's kind of a blank canvas type racket to me where it definitely needs customization I think it needs weight in the hoop, weight in the handle. It doesn't have much technology going on inside of it. So there's nothing impressive about its stability or its playability in stock form the way like a Percept or a Blade kind of has. But what you're gaining is a much cleaner overall feel. This one's also foam filled, kind of like the T-Fight. So the feel is excellent. I think there's, there's definitely a market for this racket, obviously. Like if you want a control racket with not many bells and whistles, you're fine customizing your racket and you just want that really clean kind of traditional feel, this is an excellent racket. I'm not gonna put it in A tier, definitely not gonna put it in an S tier. B or C, I, I just don't wanna put this racket in C tier because I like playing with it so much, which is why I'm not gonna put it in C tier, I'm gonna put it in B tier. Okay, Radical and P. Okay, Radical, Radical, Radical. Oh, the Radical is funny because I want to love it. Like, I want to love the Radical because I really like the concept behind a non-constant beam, 
98 square inch racket. The whole idea is you're making it easier to use, you're giving it better variety. The problem is something in my head when I'm playing with a 98 makes me anti anything that takes away really good feel. And the problem with the Radical is because it's a non-constant beam, there's something that doesn't feel kind of perfect about it. So yeah, the variety is great. Spins great, power's great. It's really forgiving for a 98, but it doesn't have that X fun factor of like a really precise small sweet spot. I think it's just a solid B tier racket. Uh, and yeah, I'm probably gonna put it, eh, do I wanna do a whole organization thing? I wanna put it there. Um, I think I would rather play with it than the TF40. I don't know if I wanna do that yet, organize them that way, because I don't want this to be a fallen ranking. Uh, but solid B tier racket. Okay, so Strike VS, the last VS that exists. Pet peeve with the VS rackets. Like the whole thing with the VS was this is your pro style of racket and it was like pro partially because it came on spec. Like, do we really want to market a racket for being on spec? I feel like we should, that, that's like a minimum requirement for a racket would be to be on spec. Like you're just admitting your other rackets aren't on spec. Anyways, they scrapped the VS, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. You guys might be surprised by this considering my preference with certain rackets. I'm not the biggest fan of this racket. And I don't know what it is because I've always liked traditional feeling Babolat frames. I don't know, I haven't played with this racket in a long time. In fact, there's probably not gonna be any footage of the Strike VS because I kind of forgot about it. I just don't think anything's amazing. Like I think they're better control rackets. I think those rackets with better feel. The other major pet peeve that I have with the VS is that I think it needs a lot of customization. Like I played with this thing stock and it had a really low swing weight and it was unplayable that way. There's nothing kind of stabilizing it. Just needed a lot of lead in the hoop. But yeah, th this to me is just a C tier racket. There's not enough going on with it. Oh, <laughs> the Boom Pro, okay. So obviously I said there, was, there would be some personal bias with this one, but then I also included that little criteria where the general vibe of the industry with the Boom Pro and maybe it's cause the shape is weird or it, it's a little inconsistent sometimes, but people didn't, didn't love this racket. Obviously I love this racket because it's the racket that I switched to. Um, so where am I gonna put it? I don't know yet. Let's talk about what makes this racket great. So this racket's actually very similar to the new V-Core line with the shape. Like they, they have a remarkably similar shape. The second I saw the, the new V-Core, I thought, okay, this is just a boom. So I think, first of all, I really like that shape. It plays really, really well. The one little problem is that with the sweet spot farther up there and the fact that it's so squared off, the sweet spot can be a little erratic because the string bed is so open up there. I don't really have a problem with that. In fact, a racket being erratic is like, my major thing that will make me stop playing with it right away because I need a consistent string bed. So I'm gonna put it in B tier if it was my personal choice. I don't think I would put it in S tier because I am trying to be objective and I think it does have its flaws, but I'm a big fan of it. And I also think the feel is really good. It's 22 millimeter constant beam head racket, which I always think feels really good. So yeah, B tier, B tier for me. Okay, let's move on to the RF-97. Now, obviously this is a super unique racket. Like it's not, it's borderline incomparable to everything else on this list because it's so heavy. Like I try not to play with this racket because every time I do, I'm like, oh my God, this thing feels so awesome. It plays so well. And of course, after like 20 minutes, I can't swing it properly anymore, which is, basically the story of anyone who tries this racket. Because yeah, weight with swing weight is kind of the most cheat code way of improving a racket's feel, stability, spin, power, control. It just makes the racket better in pretty much every way. The problem is it makes it more difficult to use. So it's like you can't feasibly swing it over the course of like how long you'd need to swing it for. So I love the RF. I actually think in terms of like pro player rackets, it's probably one of the most usable ones. You can use this racket, A, if like you're a huge Fed fan and you kind of want to shoehorn his frame into your game. And if you just don't really care about like optimizing your performance because this racket will hold you back a little bit. That being said, it's such a fun frame to play with that I don't want to put it in the C tier. So I I'm going to go B tier. I can't put it any higher than that because like I just don't think it's... It's a racket that most people should be using. So I'm gonna go B tier. Ooh, okay, V-Core 98. Okay, this one I'm very excited to talk about because I hadn't 
hit with it in a long time. And I took out a few rackets for the purpose of this video. One of them was the Vico 98. This is a really, really good racket. In the Percept 97 versus Vico 95 video, I said the Vico 98 was a little too wild. Like, yes, it's a little bit inconsistent. It's always going to happen with this shape, but the new shape is super, super stable. Like they nailed the stability. I know it was a big thing they were trying to do with the new shape. So stability is one of the ways you get consistency. Because it's so, so spin friendly, you're gonna be able to tame that wild side that it has. So I, I definitely want to put this A tier. I don't think I wanna put it S tier. Ooh, would I rather play with this than the V Core 95? Like more people can play with the V Core 98. I think the V Core 95 is maybe a more special racket. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go pretty comfortable A tier with this one. Okay, the Extreme Tour. This is a racket I wanna like so much more than I do because when you combine a 98 square inch hoop with spin technology and a spin line with the head brand, normally I would expect really good feel, really good control, and an element of spin that a lot of other head rackets don't have. It has that spin for sure. One of the most spin friendly 98s out there. Prob actually probably the most spin friendly 98. The problem is the control just isn't there. For the control and the feel just aren't there for me. There's like a weird disconnect in the sweet spot. I think it has something to do with the throat shape. It just doesn't flex right. And this is maybe a, a me thing because I know how popular this racket is. So like if this was fully my personal opinion, I'd probably say C tier. This is this probably gonna be controversial because most people would probably say A tier, like the industry would probably say A tier. I just, I can't, I can't say A tier. Okay, the E-Zone 98. Now, if it's not the blade, the E-Zone is my favorite line of all time. This, okay. The E-Zone line deserves so much, I think this line deserves somehow more credit than it gets. Like people love the E-Zone, but what are we seeing as the general trend in the industry right now? Flexible throats, stiff hoops. Okay, brands are doing it with like weird layups and stuff now, but the original E-Zone is the original racket that started the flexible throat, stiff hoop trend, at least, I think it is. It's doing it through like frame design, not layup technology. So it's really cool because it's more of like a physical thing, I guess. Well, it's all physical, but this one you can just see better. So the E-Zone is one of the best lines of all time. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of this version of the E-Zone. I, I actually really liked the last one. Didn't like the one before that. The DR98 is one of my favorite rackets ever. But the problem I had with this one, and I was a little annoyed at Yonex for a while, was they, they thickened all their rackets. Like, I don't, I don't know if this got talked about that much, but all their rackets got thicker by half a millimeter or a full mill. No, I think it was half a millimeter. The E-Zone included. And I was just annoyed by that because it makes it feel bigger in your hand. It makes it feel less good on contact. This one, this is, this one still has vibration dampening mesh. Again, not my cup of tea personally, but every time I play with it, like it's still an E-Zone where the variety is one of, if not the best rackets out there for variety. The throat is thin, so it accelerates super quickly through contact. So spin is amazing. It's significantly more powerful than your average 98 because the hoop is thick, so you get a lot of pop, but it's a very easy racket to control. So you don't get like an erratic feel from it. So for me, it's either a, uh, for me, it's a, it, it, okay, it's just a solid A tier. Like I'm not gonna put it S tier because I think there have been better feeling E zones in the past, but there's no way I'm putting it B tier because it's just such a good racket. So yeah, if you want one of the best all around rackets right now, I, and if, in fact, you'll probably see from the footage, like I just hit really well every time I play with an E zone. It's a good racket. Okay, Clash 98. I, it, this racket almost feels like out of place on this list because most of the rackets we've talked about here are at, at least in some form players rackets. The Clash 100, maybe controversial opinion on this, but fantastic racket. I know some purists don't love the Clash 100, and, and it's definitely not a purist racket, but it's objectively very good at what it does. It's super comfortable. It's way more stable than you would expect considering the flex. I think it's a perfect racket for so many people. It just kind of feels like Wilson made a 98 square inch version of a Clash just so that it exists. I, I think it's a good enough racket. It could go B tier. I'm gonna put it C tier because I it, just feels like it's having a bit of a crisis of identity. Like 98s are comfortable generally. Like you can find a comfortable thin beam 98 that weighs about the same as the Clash 98, but you just, you'll have better, better feel, better precision and the same amount of comfort. So there's not much of a point in going for the Clash 98. I, I don't know. I like, it's a, 
It's a good enough racket if you like it. Okay, so the TF40 315. Okay, part of part of my criticism of the 305 was that it's a platform racket and needs weight to perform, which the 315 basically is. I still think weirdly the swing weight is too low. They could just have nailed the target swing weight instead of basically making it so you need to customize it. Like same same thing applies here. Great feel super clean. I would rather go for the 305 actually uh, because I like customizing up to a certain spec. I'm just gonna go B tier. Not much more to say about that. Good racket. Um, oh yeah, uh, just good spin on the TF, on actually all Technofiber rackets. Impressive amounts of spin. Uh, Radical Pro. Okay, so this is not just a heavier version of the Radical. Well, okay. Not as much as the TF40 is a heavier version of the of the 305 because this thing is is way thinner but it kind of suffers from the same issues that the mp has in that your beam is on average like 20 and a half millimeters but you don't have the feel of what i would expect from a 20 and a half millimeter beam like the sweet spot definitely feels bigger it's not as precise but your variety is great now i think it i think it plays better than the radical mp but i don't i don't think it's like worth putting it into A tier for that. As a play tester, one of the things you look for is like something outstanding in a racket. For example, on the V Core 95, it's the spin and power for the fact that it's a 95. It's like, wow, that is insane. That's unique. I don't get that from anything else. That's why I want to keep playing with the V Core 95. The Radical Pro just doesn't have anything that makes me want to keep playing with it, but it's actually probably a good thing because if you're just playing with one racket, you want the you don't want any surprises. So not actively thinking about something super cool about the rack. It's probably not a bad thing. Um, so yeah, I'll just put a beats here. I wonder if they'll ever go back to a constant beam radical because one of the things head doesn't have is like a, a blade like racket. The prestige is not a blade. The radical isn't a blade. The boom's definitely not a blade, which I think <laughs> we don't need another head racket, but if ever, yeah, <laughs> it would be kind of cool to have one. Um, okay, blade 98, 18, 20. So that, that whole thing, Blade 98 1820, is synonymous with my favorite racket of all time. Whenever there is a new one, I get super excited. This one is less outstanding than the 1619 because the 1619 has a really low swing weight and it's super playable at that swing weight. The, the 1820 has a much higher swing weight and I understand why. Actually, I think I'm going to make a video about 1619 versus 1820. And part of the reason why you need more weight than 1820 is kind of to get that string bed moving the same amount. You need more mass behind the ball. So yeah, I get why the swing weight is high, but I also think that takes away from its specialness. Now the spin is pretty good for an 18 mainer. It's actually very good for an 18 mainer. I, wow, I'm putting a lot of rackets in the B tier here. I, I de I'm definitely not putting the C tier. Okay, you know what I think I'm gonna do? I think I'm going to, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put the blade 1820 in B tier and I'm gonna move the 1619 up because of a few things. I think the feel is, it's fine. It's not the best feel I've ever felt. It's a little mushy. It's not gonna go in S tier, but I think it's a more impressive racket. The 1820 is a solid, solid frame, but this is the one, like if I'm gonna lower the blade for having not impeccable feel, it's gonna be the 1820 because you kind of want that from your more control oriented version of the racket. And there's less outstanding, there's less outstanding about the 1820 than there is about the 1619. So yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. B tier for the 1820, A tier for the 1619. Um, Percept 97H, I haven't played with this racket. Just gonna admit it. Uh, yeah, I never really play with the heavy version of the V-Core Pro slash Percept because I just customize the lighter one to what I want. I know some people will love this racket. Yeah, everything I said about the Percept kind of applies to this one. Let's go A tier, sure, why not? Uh, Prestige Pro, okay. It's, it's an awesome racket that will sell to who it's been selling to for the last, what, 30 years the Prestige has been around? Like, if we're talking about a line modernizing, it does it. It just takes about 10 years to modernize. So it's like when it finally switched from a 95 to a 98 on like, what, three versions ago? It was like, all right, you probably could have made that switch like in 2013. So yeah, when it's 2030, we might get like half a millimeter thicker on this thing. But it just, it's, it's tough to play with. The string bed is so, so dense. It has a high swing weight, super high static weight. Maybe by 2040, it'll be 10 grams lighter. So I like, I'm, 
it, it's it's a very good prestige actually the field just got a little bit better i just can't put a prestige in c tier because it's such a fun racket to play with but yeah it's a prestige there's not much more to it so we're gonna put it in b tier okay arrow 98 okay i did kind of leave this for last like this is just easy s tier yeah easy s tier uh, it's one of the most special rackets that I've played with in a very, very long time. Like, this is something, like, and, and you notice, like, Yonix, Wilson, Technofiber, Yonix. Where is Babylon? Where is Babylon? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Oh, Babylon. Okay, one Babylon racket there. This is the thing with Babylon. They have, like, two rackets. Okay, maybe not two. But they know what they're doing when they release a racket. The, the Aero 100, the, the Aero Pro Drive, when it came out, changed the game, completely changed the game. They developed it proper, they knew, they just know what they're doing. I don't think the Aero 98 is gonna change the game quite as much, but this is, like, if you could design the perfect racket for a high level player in 2023, it's the Aero 98. It's precise, it's stable, it's powerful, it's spin friendly. The feel is significantly better than it was on the VS. It doesn't have classic kind of grab and place the ball style of control, but that's not how Carlos Alcaraz, Holger Rune, Felix, Fies, that's not how they play. They swing big with full strokes, tons of spin, and that's where this racket just excels. I'm so impressed with Babolat. They, they take their time to develop and release rackets, and they seem to nail it every time. So to me, like the easiest S tier racket. Yeah, uh, the Aero 98 is just awesome. Okay, what I wanna do here is see if there's any rearranging. So Aero 98, S tier, I like that. Vcore 95, S tier, okay, mm, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Pro Staff 97, I would put this at the bottom of the A tier for now. T Fight 305, yeah, that's an A tier racket. Percept 97, Definitely an A tier racket. Is it an S tier racket though? Mm, we'll come back to that. T Fight 305, V Core 98. I, yeah, I'd probably prefer to play with the V Core. Nah, but the T Fight's just such a unique racket. Nah, oh, they're both super unique rackets, to be fair. Uh, e Zone 98, A tier. Yeah, I'm not going to put an E Zone in B tier. I just don't think that racket deserves it. Blade 98, 1619. Yep, that's A tier. I'm actually kind of happy with that. Percept 97H. Like I said, I fully haven't played with this racket. <laughs> just, I know what to expect. Pro Staff 97. Yeah, I, I kind of, I like that A tier. Uh, Blade 98, 1820. It hurts me to put a blade in B tier, especially in 1820. But yeah, I think the feel just isn't quite as good as it should be. Radical MP. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be an A tier racket. Like, the variety is is really good and it's super consistent once you get dialed in. You know what, I kind of do want to put the Radical in A tier because, that, because yeah, I, I think I will put the Radical in A tier. I think I give it unnecessary hate because there's nothing outstanding about it, but that's outstanding in itself, which makes no sense. Yeah, it's variety is outstanding. And to get that, you're going to have to sacrifice having one thing be insane. And it's the best version of the new design Radical ever by far like the feel is the best uh tf40 305 yeah b tier racket it might be controversial because purists will say oh, it should be s tier yeah sure if you want to put it s tier put it s tier but i think b tier boom pro i i think it's a b tier racket rf97 another controversial one where roger federer would put this s tier i'm sure but yeah just not enough people can play with it consistently so b tier extreme tour that's another controversial one just not yeah not for me TF 4315, it's just like the TF 4305 with more weight. Radical Pro, yeah, I, do I wanna move this one up after what I said? No, probably not, because 4A 315, is it 315? For a 315 gram racket, I'd, I would want more feel and like classic control, so I'm gonna keep it there. Prestige Pro, hurts me to put you there, but yeah, I you're just a B tier racket at this point. Strike VS, yeah, no, C tier. I would almost put this one, nah, no, I wouldn't put a D tier. Come on, look. No, for, for the right person who's gonna take the time to dial this thing in, it's it's definitely not a D tier racket, but not any higher than C. There's just, yeah, there's there's too much work that needs to be done. And Clash 98, it yeah, it just feels a little, not lazy. I, I get who would like this, but no, so C tier. So yeah, that's uh, gonna be the end of the tier list. I'm pretty happy with this one. 
Hopefully you guys enjoy this. I had a lot of fun making this actually. I want to keep going. I want to add like every racket, but yeah, we're going to stop it there. I hope this video isn't 30 minutes because there's no way I'm allowed to release that. So yeah, let's, uh, let's wrap it up.